Hello everyone and welcome to the Anywhere Club. My name is Chris Howard, one of the English community hosts here, and it's a real pleasure to have you listening to me today as part of our Anywhere Club interview series. For those of you that perhaps are new to the Anywhere Club, we're an online community of IT professionals focused on building your professional careers, skills, competencies, and helping you really just further your own careers in the IT professional world. It's a real privilege to have uh, Evgeny joining us today, and I'll tell you a little bit more about the format shortly. Uh, and Evgeny is going to be talking to us about a whole range of subjects as part of this Anywhere Club interview series. There's a whole suite of these videos available on the YouTube channel. And if you haven't registered already, then please do visit aw.club to get the very latest on all of the activities happening in our online community and engage with us in our social channels, conversations around everything from new programming languages to learning a new language, relocation, and your own career development. So without further ado, let's get stuck into today's Anywhere Club interview series. And it's a real privilege to welcome Evgeny Borisov to the stage to say hello. So it's great to have you join us, Evgeny. So please do uh, give us a few minutes introducing yourself and tell us a bit more about your role at EPAM. Okay, so uh, I um, started with uh, uh, computer science in '93 uh, when my parents bought me a computer and I wrote uh, some Pascal applications. Uh, and in 2000, I started uh, in uh, Champlain College uh, to learn uh, Java language. Uh, and in parallel, I started teaching Java because I was already lecturer uh, the psychometric exam. Uh, I was living in Israel and in Israel, psychometric exam, it's like SAT or Yege in uh, other countries. Uh, so I was a teacher for several years in parallel that I was learning by myself Java at the university. And in 2007, I started to work in a company very similar to the company I work now, but it was a small company in Israel called Alpha CSP, which was professional services and courses for, for the people who work in the Java industry. I started to work with EPAM since 2011, I think. I was uh, involved in a lot of different activities. I was speaking at the conferences, uh, which was supported by EPAM. Uh, I was a Java trainer for a lot of teams uh, in, in, at EPAM. Uh, and uh, in 2015, they suggested me to, to come to work as employee. Uh, but I still decided that I want to be freelance. And uh, finally, uh, my, my final step uh, to enter the EPAM was when the company, uh, which I was uh, one of the founders of the uh, department of uh, developers, was bought by EPAM. And since uh, 2019, I'm officially EPAM employee, not just the external guy who helps and loves EPAM. Excellent. Uh, so if we had to, what, what would we call you? What, what is your role at EPAM, Evgeny? What, what is that? Today, uh, actually, my official title, I, I think I didn't change it yet in Telescope. Uh, it's our system uh, where can everybody see. So I, I'm written as a software director. But actually, my title should be Developer Relations Lead. That's a perfect segue into kicking off our conversation today then around developer relations. And, uh, and you've just mentioned a little bit around how you got started. But how did you get started in developer relations? Where did that come from? Actually, now I understand that I started with developer relations uh, uh, even before this term was already invented, uh, or at least known in, in the public society. Every time when you travel to the conference and you do some extra miles, you uh, invest uh, in the engagement of people to be part of the community. This is actually the developer activity. And I, I love to speak. I love uh, speaking at the conferences. I love uh, teaching people. I love uh, b help them to build a career and the roadmap, you know. Uh, so all my activities was around the people to help them to pass the interview, you know, to, to make the assessment. Now I understand that all my life I was doing the DevRel work. So, uh, but, but just now when I'm almost 45, I'm officially DevRel uh, developer relations lead. You just mentioned your age, and I'm not going to dwell on that, but I've been informed you've been developing Java since 2001 and, uh, and obviously been involved in significant kind of large scale enterprise projects. How do you feel that experience kind of helps you in your developer relation role? 
you know, I, I want to show you something. Uh, this is uh, the T-shirt I, I did by myself and I love it. And it explains what I'm doing. And it's very related to the, to, 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 to the question you ask. Okay. So if you ask in a couple of words, what developer advocate or other guys, which are uh, part of the devrel activities, what are they doing? So mostly they should answer. I drink, I, I speak with the people, I communicate with the people and uh, I know things. Okay. The, the only difference with the Terran land is so that instead of drinking wine, we drink Java, we drink uh, technologies, uh, and we speak a lot about it. So, uh, in order to be a part of the devrel organization, uh, actually, in my opinion, Everybody should be involved into DevRel, okay? Because DevRel, it's uh, it's about the life of the developer, okay? Uh, developers are different people. They are not like, you know, you go to work, you close the door, and now you back home and you forget about your work, okay? You you always think about it. You uh, If your friends are other developers, and this is a good chance when you speak with them, you speak a lot about, uh, not, maybe it's not only work, but it's about professional growth, about the technologies, and so on and so on. Uh, so, uh, in order to be a uh, DevRel uh, distributor, let's say that uh, like this, uh, it's not enough just to know how to speak and uh, to communicate with people. Uh, otherwise, they will not trust you if you don't have the real expertise uh, from the real project. So, for sure, enterprise projects, it's a lot of experience of the pain of the people, of the technologies, of the difficulties. And my experience for sure helped me uh, to be a good distributor, I hope, of, of the real activities and to understand uh, more of the problems of the people I'm communicating with. Makes perfect sense. So that idea of, as we say in English, kind of walking the walk before you kind of talk the talk, it makes perfect sense in this. And I want to move on to our next section now, because I I know there's going to be people listening to this who perhaps this is the first time they've heard DevRel or developer relations. So. Let's talk a little bit around what that is, what, what developer relations actually is, and, and why is it important to today's tech industry? So over, over to you for that one. First of all, I think that developer relations is not important only today. I think it's always was important. So if you want to, uh, to discover what does these uh, six magic words mean, uh, letters mean, I mean, uh, DevRel. Uh, so DevRel, it's like a shortcut from developer relations abbreviation. We can ask Wikipedia or ChatGPT of the definition because it's very, really hard to define because uh, the real it's about the li around the life of the developer. If you look from the point of view of the company, the rail is kind of an instrument which should be used and must be used in order to help the company to go to the right way. Uh, finally, each company want uh, want the money, want to increase the income. But in order to do it in correct way, uh, we need to build the company around uh, our main uh, power, and it is developers. Okay, so the idea is that if you want to do something with developer, to hire it, to uh, to change the attrition, uh, to uh, decrease attrition and increase retention, right? You cannot do it. Uh, you can do it, but it's not really working with other uh, instruments like. Uh, uh, for example, okay, let's start with example. If we are talking about the hiring, right? It's w one of the very important topics for each company, the hiring. Uh, we can spend a lot of money in order to make people come to our company. Uh, but the point of view of the world that we need to spend a lot of money in order to uh, to create the company that the people will, uh, will want to work inside it. If I'm a developer and I want to go to work to the EPAM, for example, uh, sh should I ask, and Chris, I'm asking you, who will you ask? Who, 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 who will you ask uh, to make this solution, if it's correct or not? I mean, hopefully you'd ask other developers or, or people you consider to be role models, I suppose. Yeah. Uh, so the the opinion, of, for example, of HR is less uh, important for the developer than the, uh, another developer because he understands his set of mind. And uh, in, if uh, other developers will say, I never heard about this company, this is not so good answer. And if he will say, oh, no, it's a big alley, don't go to that. I heard a lot of stories. Or oh, I was there and uh, I was sitting in the very boring project and nobody cares about me and uh, nobody uh, I have not, not, nobody to speak with and uh, to change them, this, these things. So you will not go to work in such a company. Okay. So uh, this kind of uh, uh, special advert 
kind of advertisement, uh, which is totally different from the marketing uh, or business. Uh, this is one example. Another example, it can be from the point of view of the clients. Uh, if I'm a client and I want to decide if I want to buy some technology, technology product, like let's take an example, a uh, product company which uh, cr uh, which create uh, Visual Studio or IntelliJ and some other company need to decide uh, what product they should buy for, for their developers. For sure, they will going to ask the developers what they prefer. Okay, it, it will take um, uh, a big part in, the, in this solution, right? It's not only about money because uh, today companies understand that if the developers is not uh, satisfied with their work and their, with their instruments, uh, they will leave the company someday. So uh, they're going to take into account their opinion and their opinion uh, based on uh, what developers are speaking. So we need to speak. We need to speak a lot about what are we doing, how we're doing to help to each other, to build the communications. And the same with the attrition of the people, you know, uh, uh, in my opinion, every three years, uh, people should switch the project. I thought before that people should switch the company every three years, but in case we have a big company with a lot of different industries inside or a company like IPAM, when you have a lot of different projects, okay, it's one of the big advantages of well, outsource company and not uh, any developer understand that, by the way, uh, in my opinion, it's very good if you want the, the professional career of the developer, uh, one of the good uh, options is to be in some uh, very known, popular uh, outsource company, but uh, I will not use the outsource here. Uh, it's only the semantic, uh, but I'm talking about that you can uh, switch between the projects because you have a lot of clients. And if you feel that you are starting to burn out, you can ask and you have an options where can, where can you move when you work in some small startup. It can be very good for several years, but after you know everything and it starts to be boring and you have no way to move. Okay, so uh, what we can do with the DevRel, we can uh, tell about what, has, what what kind of projects we are doing and uh, what the solutions do we have. And it can help people grow and see what happens inside the company and move from project to project instead of leaving the company. So we can change that region with DevRel as well. Many of you listening will know that I'm very active in the open source world where we talk about community managers and developer advocates. And, and you've mentioned DevRel and, and I've also got some notes here around developer evangelists. How do you see all of those roles kind of fitting into the DevRel landscape? Actually, uh, I will tell you my own story. In the end of 2015, I, it was a long period when I was a freelancer and then uh, uh, some Israel company that was called Naya Technologies. Uh, it was a small company of uh, 50, uh, 18 people, 80, 80, 100, maybe a little bit less. Uh, it was a company uh, which uh, had prof provided professional services uh, uh, in the data world. Okay, so, you know, SQL uh, and uh, things like, th like this. But in the last year, this company was uh, starting with the big data and um, they decided they need to grow up uh, the department of developers because before that they had only, you know, several DBAs, uh, BI and people like that. And they uh, convinced me to, to help them with that. So I started to work in this company, which finally was bought by IPAM. And I started to, to build uh, the department of uh, developers. And in the, in the same year, I, in parallel, I was uh, speaking a lot in the different conferences about, you know, Spring Framework and, uh, uh, and the Spark and a lot of uh, related things. Uh, and I didn't knew then yet uh, about the term of the developer advocate. I knew only the term of evangelist. Uh, so because the evangelist was before. Actually, it's more or less the same, but in my opinion, Evangelist is much more about a product company. If your company is professional services, uh, you are not an Evangelist of something. Uh, and uh, I, I really, if, I, I think I, I, I got this title developer advocate then by myself. I invented it uh, as, uh, as a will, you know, with, with any other people. Uh, and it happened in one day. 
I, I loved uh, to take all my developers uh, to, to some picnic and, you know, to, to uh, arrange a lot of um, uh, not formal meetings. And uh, I, I think it was in some forest. We sit in the forest around the fire and uh, we, with, with some laptop, with some small presentation about some uh, some the technology things uh, and with the guitar, you know, it's very cool atmosphere. Uh, that's what I'm loving in, in the DevRel, you know, su such evenings. And then uh, somebody asked me, uh, who are you for us? Uh, what is your real uh, duty? Okay, you are, you are the, uh, the chief of this department, but who are you for us? And then I thought about it and I even prepared a small presentation and in, in the final slide I was, I'm your advocate. I even didn't use the term developer advocate and I didn't thought about this concept. I just say, I'm your advocate. Why? Because any company want, uh, we are talking about again, uh, out, uh, not uh, outstaffing, but outsourcing company, which, which I know it's very strong people with a lot of experience and they come, they solve problems and they switch from the project to project to, together with the teams or individuals. Uh, and, uh, for such a companies, the people is is the product, right? They not doing the products; they using the people in order to build products for other companies. So, the, the, for this company, the people are the product. Uh, so, and somebody need to be your advocate, otherwise you believe and company understand that. So, I am here to listen to you, to understand your problems, to understand your pain and to make you want continue working with us and growing with us. So who am I? I'm the advocate. So much more, I love the term developer advocates. Uh, it doesn't sound something uh, which can be related to the religion because I don't love to go to this topic. Uh, it's very sensitive, you know. Uh, so developer advocates is more of the same, but in my opinion, it's much modern and more correct name for this industry, for this uh, title. Yeah, and, and and that's really painted a, a good picture for me in terms of understanding the kind of interoperability and how they kind of work together. So it makes perfect sense to me. Now, the Anywhere Club is all about kind of helping IT professionals with their skills and their career development. And, and you've mentioned certainly some of the stuff around being a great kind of advocate and communication and kind of sitting alongside some of the, the best developers in the organization. But if you could kind of pin down maybe some key experience or skills or competencies that are important for working in DevRel, what might be two or three of those? So in order to contribute something uh, to the real activities, because it's for developers and developers of people, you need to love to communicate with people. So this is the first thing. Uh, second thing, you um, you need to be a good speaker, okay? Because you, you need to explain uh, and, uh, about your work and about uh, the projects and about the technologies, and you need to do uh, to know to do that. And uh, the last but not the least, maybe it's even uh, the most important thing, you need to be, to be a professional in some industry, in some field, in some, uh, you need to know what I'm going to talk about. You need to know this technology. So you need to have an experience. Otherwise, you will not have uh, the authority to, 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 to as a speaker. No, nobody will listen to you. He'll say, who, who is that guy? He not really understand about what, what he's talking about. Okay, he's talking about the spring, but he came from the university and the only thing he know is, is just several books he read, but, but uh, he not really was in the production. So, so this is for things. Love people, know how to speak, know how uh, know things and the last one and the last one is the most important one you know to listen you know to listen for the people and uh, you, you need to listen that they will want to tell you about their real problems because you know when HR will come uh, to developers with some survey and with us uh, what do you think about our company he will say everything is okay just leave me alone no he not really want to talk I love it. I mean, my next question was going to be most important qualities, but I think you've you've kind of nailed that perfectly down with listening. I think that's so important. And I loved your third reason there around, I think there's lots and lots of examples and we, we won't name names, we're all friends here, but there's lots of examples of perhaps people out there that shout and talk about stuff, but actually perhaps don't have the experience like yourself to actually talk professionally about their kind of expertise and skills around certain areas. So it's great, great to hear that. And I think that's a really good summary, particularly for our listeners around what are skills and capabilities. So there is one question, which I know we did a little bit of a pre-brief on, but you're very excited for this question. So it's what languages do you need to know for DevRel? 
what languages? Uh, English, maybe Spanish, Java, Python, uh, Scala, Kotlin. <laughs> what do you mean Chris, by languages? We are talking about human languages or computer languages. Exactly. Well, I, I kind of left it open because I think that there's probably two answers, isn't there? There's, there's, there's a programming languages, which I think you've mentioned, but also is English the DevRel language or, or do you see kind of geographical kind of DevRel communities and how do they I, work together? Yeah, I, I think any language can be good. It depends on where you're working. You need to understand the people. If, if you, uh, by the way, yes, I can tell you something about it. Uh, for example, when, uh, when I was in Israel, I understood that every time when uh, I need to uh, lecture in English because we have uh, some uh, uh, students in the class which came from other country uh, not long ago and they do not know the Hebrew, it was different atmosphere. People always, almost always prefer native speaker. So, uh, and if you are, came from another country and you don't speak uh, Spanish, for example, but uh, now you're in Colum uh, Colombia, it's much better to you to learn a little bit Spanish because people will, people love it. People love that you spend your time in order to, uh, you show to the people that you really interested to understand them because you even learn their language in order to make it more natural. Okay. So it is important as you can to speak with the same language that people speak with. Yeah, makes perfect sense, particularly if we go back to your point around trying to be an advocate and sit alongside them, share their problems, but also the successes. I think living in their community, their culture and learning that language, I think it tells a great story. Perfect. So I now want to perhaps become a bit more of a business commercial question. So there might be some people listening who perhaps don't have a DevRel competency within their organization or maybe want to go and work for an organization that perhaps doesn't have a very strong one. And, and the question I really want to ask is around, what are some of the kind of metrics of success for DevRel work? So why, why should organizations be interested or even investing money in DevRel? What, what's at the end for them? What, why is it attractive? Finally, for the, comp for the point of view of the company, is everything about the money and the perspective for the, uh, it's not only money for now, it's money for the future as well. Okay, and in order to do that, you need a strong core of developers which will continue with you for a long period of time because if uh, any developer which comes to your company will leave after one year, you will not build something where we really a production, right? Uh, um, so uh, in order to measure uh, if our DevRel is really working good, we need to see about the numbers of uh, risk, on, risk, risk of leaving. We can change this with the DevRel activities. Uh, numbers of our attrition, uh, we can see how much money we spent on the hiring because it influenced hardly because if our DevRel is working really good, People will come to our company without uh, us spending a lot of money for campaigns, telemarketing, and so other uh, instruments which can be used by standard, uh, you know, approach. The star profiles metrics, okay, okay, uh, and how many time uh, people uh, spent on the bench, how fast we can start the company. Uh, so it depends. It's, uh, it depends on what are you, your company is doing, but it's, it's, it's things like that. Absolutely makes makes perfect sense. Um, and then the final question in that section really is, and thinking about your whole wealth of experience, could you share an example of maybe an initiative or a DevRel initiative that you've been involved in that's kind of one of your favorites or kind of one of the ones that you've really been proud of? Uh, actually, I, I love uh, speaking at the conferences. I, I think it's most uh, for me at least because uh, I'm inspired by, by, by the people. Uh, and I'm very proud that in Israel, I, I started with, uh, with, uh, zero employees in the Java department and big data department, which I built. Uh, and finally it was about 50 peoples and, uh, it was against my managers because my managers didn't understood why I'm spending such a lot of time for, uh, speaking with people and, you know, when, when I'm preparing somebody to the interview, which is another liberal activity. My manager, my uh, the, the CEO of the company, understand why I'm doing that. But why why I need to go 
to Belarus and speak at the conference in 2018 uh, or 17, uh, nobody understood it. But the <laughs> the final price for that was that our company was bought by EPAM because of my DevRel activity. And I think that this is my uh, most uh, you know success in, in, in this field, to sell a company. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's quite a success story. I think that tells a, a perfect story. So I, I, now I want to really ask her. It, it was really funny. Uh, I, I think it was 2017, because it took a couple of years. Naya Technologies was bought in 2019, but it took almost a couple of years of negotiation about uh, the value of this company. Uh, I was in the end of May uh, in the travel um, with my wife uh, to the London. I lied a little bit because uh, I bought the tickets via Minsk in order to come to the conference and to speak about uh, what's new in Spring Boot. Uh, in Spring Boot, something I, I think it was about that. So my wife was very disappointed that we're not going to the vacation to the London, but we're going through the Minsk because I need the one day to be there. And after my talk uh, of uh, uh, Spring Boot the Reaper, I, th I thought it was kind of talk like this. Uh, Arkady Dobkin, which is the CEO of uh, Ipan Company, came to me and, uh, and this, by the way, this is another example of DeVarel, CEO of company of 60,000 employees spending his time to go to the conferences and to listen to the people. Okay, so we are very DeVarel company, uh, DeVarel, right? Uh, so he came to me and he said, I want to buy your company. And I said, it's not my company. I'm just built the department of developers here. And he said, I don't know any other people. I've seen only you speaking about my technology. So for my opinion, you are the face of the company. Let or oh, give me the number and give me the price. And that's how it happened. So it sounds almost too good to be true. But here we are. Here we are today talking to you. Absolutely. So I, I'd really love to know a little bit more about, and I'm sure people listening would be, keen to hear is you mentioned some of the qualities of DevRel about being kind of very confident in speaking and communicating and you've just mentioned conferences but how do you communicate with developers and the community that you're kind of doing DevRel work for and and what does and I'll merge another question in and what does that content look like like what are the kind of things you're creating to communicate with your developers Okay, so people are different, so we need a lot of channels of communications. Uh, for, for some people, even mails can work. Uh, for most of the people, they live the live communication. So we need to build channels where people can speak and can express themselves. Okay, so we have uh, hackathons. Uh, in, in the last days, we're trying to make the hackathons great again. So, uh, you know, it's very the real activity and uh, it's, it's, it's both for fun and for the growth and for the communication. So the hackathons, the conferences, the meetups, the webinars, uh, uh, I'm thinking about some maybe humor, uh, some humor channel to make it, you know. For example, co companies like IPAM want that their developers will know about the roadmap of IPAM, right? So we have the town halls, town halls, by the way, now the developer activity. Uh, and and uh, we have uh, some monthly or uh, quarterly mails about this is the news of IPAM, what the, that's what IPAM is doing, IPAM helping people to relocate from the countries uh, of uh, around the war. People uh, do this, people do, uh, IPAM do this, IPAM do, do that. And, and they write a lot, a lot of mails. How many people in the percentage really read these mails? Uh, uh, as I understand, it's uh, maybe very special people or very responsible people uh, or very top management people. But if we will build some humor channel and make it this kind of stand-ups, but it's not just humor, it's humor about the news of the developers, what's going on in EPAM. It can be an example of another channel. No, so it's a lot of them and you sit and you need to see who are your people, what do they love, and to build only the channels to make it work, okay? Yeah, I mean, I think we're all guilty of perhaps having a few emails arrive in our inbox and thinking. One of the things I very love in DevRel that you are not limited with free uh, instruments. It's not like you have the conference, you have the webinar, and you have uh, the mail channel and Teams channel, and that's all. You can invent any channels you want till they work and not harm the people, but engage them. So how do you engage them around kind of 
education and training, what how how do you build that kind of excitement or kind of push in the right direction to get your developers to do the next big thing in terms of their education? It's it's approach is called the free points. So the point um, I need to translate it from the Russian. Uh, in Russian, it's called lichit uchit machit. Uh, so lichit it's cure. Uh, much um, uh, uh, uchit it's uh, teach and machit it's skill. So we uh, the, if if somebody don't understand that extra miles is important, it's not only about the production what I'm doing, uh, the the learning and the growing is important. If you don't understand why you need it, we need to explain. We need to teach people that it is important. If the people don't want to do that for some reason. We need to cure it. We need to understand why he don't love to, to, to learn something. And in case we're not succeeding in these two bullets, it's nothing to do. And maybe it's not our person. Maybe he need to work in another company. We will not fire him, right? But I understand that someday he will leave because without being involved in the life of the, the, the developers and without the growing, someday you will be out of the company, which always going forward i love it I, re I really like that i'm gonna i'm gonna make a note of that i think that's it you could almost apply that to kind of projects and all different whole range of initiatives i think that that's a really nice uh, nice way of looking at it so you, you've mentioned a lot around the activities you're doing but are there any kind of tools or resources that you use on maybe a daily or a weekly basis to help you with all of this activity the tools is not a question for me uh, i don't i less believe in tools i believe in people Simple enough. Moving on. I think that, that's a, a great... Excel, you know, you can even use Excel or, or PowerPoint in order to, you know, in order to explain something, you can use PowerPoint. In order to document something, you can use Excel. So I'm not going to make an adver the advertisement for some uh, mirror boards or another tools we can use in order to manage things uh, because it's about people, dev, rel, developers and relations. That's what's important. Makes perfect sense. So I mentioned at the beginning that I had a little bit of understanding of the of the of the world, although I'm learning a lot more from you um, today. And and I think in the open source world, there's an awful lot of collaboration across companies and projects and solutions. But I'm a, a little bit more interested around how that then applies or perhaps presents limitations in the DevRel space in terms of kind of cross company collaboration or competitors and policies and. And, and even understanding within the organization around how DevRel plays a part. So do you see any challenges around kind of the, the global dev community or working together as organizations? Is it, does it become difficult sometimes? Yes, we have, uh, we have uh, several problems. So the problem number one, that uh, no matter the DevRel is something which uh, we, we even have talks in the conferences about DevRel of, uh, about 10 years ago, I think we already had, or maybe seven years ago, but till now, most of the people, uh, and even in the top management, uh, part of the people not familiar with the term, even with the term. Uh, and we need to explain it again and again and explain the importance of that. Nobody, no, a lot of people understand, but it's still many uh, challenging people to explain them that it is important. Another thing is it's the metrics because uh, top management love the prov provenness of that. Uh, so we, we need to build some axiomas which work. So, for example, we need to say the more people gauged in the DevRel activities, the less attrition we have in, in that people. And how can we prove them that it's really like that? Let me give you one example. Uh, we uh, organizing some conference and we're speaking about some new accelerator which was invented by IPAM, which helps uh, with the help of ChatGPT helps uh, uh, convert code from uh, uh, language A to language B, and it's worked perfectly, okay? And some good speaker uh, have a really good inspired talk with, the, the, with hundreds of people about this new uh, accelerator we created. And let's say one, uh, one uh, woman uh, which presents at the conference and was inspired by this talk, but she doesn't really need that. In, it's not relevant for her. And then in some pub later in the evening, he's speaking with her, her, her friends, which 
and other developers, but they didn't participate in, in these conferences. And they mentioned something about ChatGPT and said, ah, by the way, IPAM developed some very interesting accelerator. Uh, actually, we don't uh, uh, do such works, but it was very uh, impressive talk, and I loved to hear about these ideas. And suddenly this guy says, hmm, can, can you tell us a little bit more details? What was the name of the company, IPAM? Let's check what they did. Okay, and then finally, let's say after several months, they buy our accelerator or our professional services and we have a very good big client. How now we will connect that it was the outcome of the conferences we created? Because the guys which bought our, our accelerator even not participated in this conference and they even didn't knew about it. You see, so it's it's not so simple to uh, to prove that uh, the DevRel really changed things, and it's it's do, but it's not simple to prove it. So it's another challenge. We need to document everything. We need to have a lot of metrics, and we need to see all the picture. So uh, we have a lot of challenges with that. Yeah, it makes perfect sense. Is that there's no clear line between, much like you'd say in a here's a product pitch by the product. There's not necessarily always a very clear line between you perhaps talking at a global Java conference and then six months down the line some business coming out of it. I I totally get it. It makes perfect sense. Another challenge, which from uh, from the uh, from one hand is a challenge, and another one is is an opportunity. Uh, that we have very distributed world today and uh, we, we, we have much less uh, online things than o- offline. And uh, I, I, I grew up in the world when in order to make different activities, I need physically to come. I tried to uh, avoid uh, speaking in the online conferences five years ago because it, it's not giving much uh, as much as when I'm feeling the people and uh, you know after the, the corridor talks after the conference this is what making a lot of benefits and we cannot do that in in the uh, uh, online okay so it's another challenge how still um, for example I, I I have new friends but I never saw them physically I never touch them and I will shake their hands you know. It's very complicated for me because I have a different set of mind. Uh, I say, okay, I cannot, uh, this is too much personal topic. In, on this topic, I will talk with you when I physically will meet you. But it never happens. And, you know, in order to build a good relations, you, it, it cannot be like, okay, we will talk about really uh, important topics when we'll meet together, but it never happens. Okay, so it's another challenge. To, to know how to survive in this uh, online world, to change maybe the set of mind of the people like me. Definitely, and, and I'm absolutely sharing that that opinion with you. I think a few years ago, we were all online, this hybrid world that we're living in, and I see, I still see real value in, like you say, those corridor conversations, or, or I heard something really interesting, let's grab a coffee and have a talk about it. It's, it's a fine balance between the, the rich conversation that happens, that kind of, unplanned kind of conversation versus a scheduled kind of 10 minutes Q and A at the end of a virtual conference. And there's a time and a place. And I think DevRel is much more in that territory around nice, natural, organic conversations like you've just mentioned. So really, really interesting. We are we're coming closer towards the end, but we've still got a few exciting topics. One in particular, which I'm going to be talking about very shortly around how do we get or helps people in their own DevRel careers. But before we do that, let's look a little bit forward. And and I'd love to ask you kind of, how do you see the field? You've, you've mentioned kind of where you were 10 years ago, developer advocacy. You've now mentioned obviously leading DevRel at EPAM. What do you see for the future of DevRel maybe over the next few years? Where, where are we going in that direction? A lot of uh, technologies is uh, changing us and the things like uh, ChatGPT, the Copilot and the other uh, instruments uh, which start doing a lot of work instead of us. What, what, what are finally leaving to us? What we can do? We, we can be the people. We can have the relations. Okay, so I think it will be even more important from the one point of view. From the, from the other hand, we have the new options for new channels and uh, the new technologies like again LLM modules give us new instruments to make DevRel to bring it to the people even better. Okay, for example, we can think about uh, building some chatbots uh, which will be 
um, powered by LLM modules will be uh, very helpful for our developers to collect their pains and to help us to co communicate with them or build for them some roadmaps for the career growth and, you know, uh, things like that. And you've mentioned, and I'm, I'm sure everyone is talking about this, AI, LLM, and I don't think anyone would, anyone would dispute that you're not necessarily a thought leader in this space. You are kind of one of the leading voices around DevRel, particularly in EPAM, you've got a great reputation. What topics are you excited about or passionate about? Is it AI and LLMs, or is there something else that you think we should all be getting excited about as well? When all this uh, boom happened in, in the February uh, of the ChatGPT, and I started uh, uh, almost every day, I had a conversation with ChatGPT to understand if we are already in the judgment day of the Terminator 2, and the Skynet is the next step, or if we are still not there. Okay, so uh, uh, <laughs> uh, in my opinion, this is the the, the, the next step for, for the evolution of the development. Uh, it will not happen this year or even next year, but I think in, in the four or five years, the developer world will be very different. Uh, Chris, do you remember the time when we developed without Google? Because we didn't have the Google. Well, yeah, I do. Yeah. <laughs> I do. <laughs> and can you compare this time with the time when you do have Google? It's a little bit different kind of, you still develop in the code. It's still about the same work, but it changed a lot and give us a new opportunity. So I think it will be the next step. So we are just trying to understand how to use all these LLM models in order to help us and not to harm for us. And what about the security and what about the regulations? So it will take time both for the for the companies who uh, develop the LLM models to make it stable, to make it much more powerful and much more useful and uh, with less hallucinations and so on and so on. And it will take time for us to understand in what industry it should be used, how it should be used, how it should be used, but and when it will happen, Olam, the, the, the world will change a lot. Definitely, and you've got you've got me thinking now. Uh, as you were talking, that I was thinking, gosh, I do remember the days of going and checking out Stack Overflow or .NET forums to try and understand why something wasn't working. And of now, of course, so many of us are just jumping onto Chat GPT and saying, why doesn't this function work the way it is? It's, yeah, absolutely. I think in five, ten years we'll be having a totally different conversation. So, yeah, a bit of a bit of a flashback then. Um, let's let's talk about um, the people listening that perhaps are, are really excited about what they've heard and and maybe they want to get stuck into DevRel as a career. So, my first question would be, what advice would you give to those listeners or those people watching today who might be interested in starting DevRel as a career? Uh, to start talking about what are you doing and start listening about uh, what our people are doing around you. You know, you can start it from uh, from from the small teams. Uh, the, the, we need to make uh, the, some weekly meetups in in the style we love. To to to, to find the the style we love, it's very important. And then we need to start sharing experience. We need to have small talks, and uh, then we can. Uh, by the way, and, and we need to do it as an EPAM to, to come to the people who want to distribute. We need to find the people who even don't understand maybe that they are potential good contributors because they don't believe. I can tell you my own story. In 99, uh, I was uh, preparing myself to the uh, SAT exam with, uh, with a woman who was a really good teacher. And I was very shy and I, I didn't know how to communicate with people. But every time when she explained something to me, I started to say, no, you're not explaining it's good. You need to explain it that, that way. So she finds something in me that I can be a good uh, explainer. I can be a good contributor with uh, some talks. And then she said, you need to do that. And I said, no, I'm shy. It's not like me. It's, it's not about me. And she convinced me she find a way how to extract it from me. And now I, I'm who am I, you know? So that's what the duty of the companies to find this potential and to grow it up. Yeah, I, lo I love it, actually. I think that's some really good advice. And it does, it does lead me on to my final question before we come to the kind of final thoughts is that within EPAM, uh, you are known kind of for building great products, but also some really excellent coaching of individuals. And you've just touched upon that with that, that story there. 
how do you see kind of the relationship between your coaching approach and DevRel? How, how does that how does that relationship exist? The coaching approach uh, it's uh, it's uh, it depends on the activities. For example, we we have the Learning Week conference in the December, and we did the call for speakers uh, last week. Okay, we need about two hundreds of talks or even more. So we need to see what other speakers we have in the EPAM and I. Uh, I hope we will be able to find more people and we need to grow them up. How we will do that? So first of all, every, uh, I, I'm going to the developer and say, okay, uh, do you want to, to participate in the conference? Look how it's cool. Look, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot of advantages, you know. Uh, then uh, if he will say, but uh, I have nothing to, to, to speak about, it cannot be. It cannot be. Any developer in his life has at least several stories he can speak about or can it can be technology talk it can be less technology talk and then we're trying to find the topic this is the first thing just to tell about yourself tell this the interesting story of your life related to the development okay this is the first thing to, to find this story the second thing then he, he need to prepare some talk and i can inspire him by other talks we need to find the style of this person to help help him to find the style how he should be speaking and the next thing, we can invite a lot of speakers to listen to him, to give him advices and step-by-step uh, step improve his skills. And that's how we can, uh, you know, engage people and grow them to be contributors of their real activities. So many times, particularly in this world, people say, oh, I, I can't speak or I don't have anything to speak about. Yes, and, yes. Then, so start from speaking to your friends, to your team, you know, start with that. If you Absolutely. successfully did it to several guys you see every day and they did the same to you, so it's not, you know, uh, it's not embracing. And after that, you feel, okay, this talk, this particular talk, uh, I feel confident enough to, to speak to, to people I don't know. And then you make it to internal department, you know, some, and then it's sm some small webinar and someday it's coming to the big conference. Absolutely. That kind of little steps leading to, to much bigger things, which I think is the, the whole conversation we spoke about today. So my final opportunity really, Evgeny, is do you have any kind of final thoughts or messages you want to perhaps give to those people watching today around anything we've spoke about uh, in the DevRel space? I think that one of the more important things you need to understand how much the developer relations is important. And uh, for the managers, I want to say that we need to build uh, the company with, uh, you know, human face and, uh, our chance to do that. It's, uh, the real, I mean, there couldn't be a more perfect way to wrap up this interview. So I must say a massive thank you, Evgeny, for your time today. It's been a real privilege to talk to you about the whole world of DevRel uh, and I've learned a lot and I'm sure those people are listening. So it's been a, a real privilege to have you join us. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. It was really good speaking with you about this interesting topic. Thank you. Thanks, and for those of you watching, so if you have enjoyed what you've heard today, uh, then please do like, comment, and of course, subscribe below uh, as part of the Anywhere Club interview series. If you haven't engaged with us online, then just visit aw.club, register in two minutes, and you too can be a part of the Anywhere Club's growing online community. And we have our Discord platform and our socials. So please do engage with us there. Plenty of rich conversation around new programming languages, learning new languages, relocation, skills, competencies, and much, much more. Thank you once again to our incredible speaker today. Thank you to you for watching, and I will see you all very, very soon. <laughs>